Dismantle the VTR564 turbocharger as follows. Use the chain block when lifting the heavy objects and fix wire ropes at the specified position. Remove the mounting bolts of the silencer. Carefully remove the silencer. Remove the oil drain plug and drain off the oil. Remove the mounting bolts and screw the puller screws into the three positions. Then carefully remove the compressor and bearing space cover by pulling it evenly. Check the true running of the oil pump at its shaft end. Remove the bolt, washers, and the holding springs. Raise the bent end of the locking plate. Install the rotor fixing tool. Loosen the cap nut with the hook spanner, then remove the oil pump. Pull out the locking plate. Measure the distance K at the compressor and check if it agrees with the figure shown on the plate attached inside the compressor end bearing space cover. Remove the mounting bolts of the turbine end bearing space cover. Screw the puller screws into the three positions, then remove the bearing space cover by pulling it evenly. Check the true running of the oil pump at its shaft end. Remove the bolt, washers, and the holding springs. Raise the bent end of the locking plate. Install the rotor fixing tool. Loosen the cap nut with the hook spanner, then remove the oil pump. Pull out the locking plate. Loosen the ring nut with the box spanner. Remove the rotor fixing tool. Pull out the centrifugal dirt separator using the extractor and the extracting bush. Remove the bolts and the spring washers. Screw the extractor onto the inner bearing bush and withdraw the turbine end bearing assembly.
Loosen the ring nut with the box spanner. Remove the rotor fixing tool. Pull out the centrifugal dirt separator using the extractor and the extracting bush. Remove the bolts and the spring washers. Screw the extractor onto the inner bearing bush and withdraw the compressor end bearing assembly. Screw the centering tube on the rotor. Fix the guide piece to the air inlet casing. Fix the guide plate to the gas inlet casing. Fix the axial lock with the ring nut. Install the holder to the air inlet casing. Put marks on the air inlet casing and on the air outlet casing. Remove all the bolts. Press off the air inlet casing with the puller screws. After centering with the chain block, Carefully pull out the air inlet casing. Remove the centering tube. Screw the eye nut on the rotor at the compressor end. Remove the axial lock. Screw the guide tube by the box spanner onto the rotor turbine end. Fix the extension tube and clamp it with the socket screw wrench. Center the rotor by adjusting the pulley of the guide piece. 
Insert the pin at the end of the extension tube to protect the rotor from sliding out. Lift the rotor slightly with the chain block and check that the rotor turns smoothly. Screw the puller bolts at the three positions, then press off the partition wall evenly. Carefully pull out the rotor until the pin touches the guide plate. Bolt the sling rope to the air outlet casing and support the rotor by the rope at shaft protection sleeve. Remove the wire rope from the eye nut. Suspend the rotor by the wire rope at shaft protection sleeve. Remove the sling rope. Carefully pull out the rotor. Raise the bent end of the locking plates. Remove the upper bolt on the cover ring. Assemble the guide bar and extension bar. Screw them in upper tapped hole. Install the extractor. Bolt the fulcrum to the air outlet casing and suspend the notched blade from the fulcrum then put the guide bar in a notch. Remove all the remained bolts and washers. Screw the puller screws into three positions and press off the cover ring evenly. Remove the cover ring. Remove the guide bar and extension bar. Raise the bent end of the locking plates. Remove the bolts, then remove the segments of the outer ring. Raise the bent end of the locking plates. Remove the bolts, then remove the top segment of intermid ring. Assemble the guide bar and extension bar. Screw them in an upper tapped hole. Bolt the fulcrum to the air outlet casing and suspend the notch blade from the... Put the guide bar in a notch of the blade. Remove the remaining bolts and the segments of intermid ring. Remove the nozzle insert. Remove the guide bar, extension bar, fulcrum, and notched blade. The disassembly procedure is now completed.
Reassemble the VTR-564 type as follows. Attach the guide bar, extension bar, fulcrum and the notched blade as same as dissembling. Align the notch of the nozzle inner ring with the gas inlet casing knock pin and install the nozzle insert to the gas inlet casing. Check the nozzle insert is correctly installed. Fit the segments of intermit ring. Apply the anti-seizure lubricant to the bolt. Tighten the bolts with the specified torque using the torque wrench. Bend the locking plates. Install the segments of outer ring. Apply the anti-seizure lubricant to the bolt. Tighten the bolts with the specified torque as well. Bend the locking plates. Attach the guide bar and extension bar as well as disassembling. Install the nozzle cover ring by sliding on the guide bar. Screw the bolts with locking plates. Tighten the bolts with the specified torque using the torque wrench. Bend the locking plates. Remove the guide bar, extension bar, fulcrum and notched blade. Screw the guide tube by the box spanner onto the rotor turbine end. Fix the extension tube and clamp it with socket screw wrench. Screw the eye nut onto the rotor. Suspend the shaft protection sleeve of the rotor by the wire rope. Carefully insert the rotor. Insert the pin at the end of the extension tube to protect the shaft from sliding out. Support the shaft protection sleeve with a sling rope. Remove the wire rope from the shaft protection sleeve. Put the rope to the eye nut at compressor end, then suspend the shaft end. Remove the sling rope. Align the petition wall knock hole with the gas outlet casing knock pin, then insert the rotor. Remove the wire rope. Remove the eye nut. Screw the centering tube on the rotor.
Remove the extension tube and guide tube. Then fix the axial lock with the ring nut. Carefully insert the air inlet casing. Align the marks on the air inlet casing and the air outlet casing. Tighten all the bolts. Remove the guide piece and the centering tube. Remove the holder. Remove the axial lock and the guide plate. Apply lubricating oil to the bearing and its holder. Align the guide bolt and positioning hole of the bearing, then install the bearing. Insert the centrifugal dirt separator then fasten with the ring nut. Install the rotor fixing tool. Tighten the ring nut with the box spanner. Tighten the ring nut harder with the box spanner from zero to the specified scale. Install the bolts. Install the lock plate. Perform the priming for the oil pump. Install the oil pump and fasten with the hook spanner. Install the holder spring. Apply lubricating oil to the bearing and its holder. Install the bearing. Install the centrifugal dirt separator, then fasten with the ring nut. Tighten the ring nut with the box spanner. Tighten the ring nut harder with the box spanner from zero to the specified scale.
Install the bolts. Measure the distance K at the compressor end and check that the distance K is same as the one measured during disassembly. Fasten the lock plate. Install the oil pump. Tighten the cap nut with the hook spanner. Install the holder spring. Check the oil pump for runout tolerance at the shaft end. Bend the lock plate to the ring nut and the cap nut directions. Check the oil pump for runout tolerance at the shaft end. Bend the lock plate to the ring nut and the cap nut directions. Install the bearing space cover. Remove the screw plug, then supply the lubricating oil. Fasten the plug. Install the bearing space cover at the compressor end. Remove the screw plug, then supply the lubricating oil. Fasten the plug. Carefully install the silencer. Fasten all the bolts. Remove the wire rope. The reassembly procedure is now completed. Sixty-seven service stations in 45 nations are ready to provide the maintenance service for the VTR-type turbochargers.